afternoon. Welcome to NASA's Media Telecon regarding the Russian meteor. Uh, we have with us today NASA experts, uh, Dr. Bill Cook. Dr. Cook is the lead for the Meteoroid Environment Office at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. We also have Dr. Paul Chodas, who is a research scientist in the Near Earth Object Program Office at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. Uh, Bill and Paul have a few introductory comments. After their remarks, we will take questions uh, from the media. So, Bill, I will turn it over to you for your introductory comments. Okay. Uh, my comments are going to be uh, with regard to the Russian meteor over uh, Chelyabinsk. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. Uh, Russia that occurred approximately 9.20 a.m. Russian time this morning. What we know at this time is as follows. A, a rock and a small asteroid or large meteoroid, depending on how you want to define it, entered the atmosphere. This rock was about 15 meters in diameter and with a weight of about 7,000 metric tons. It was moving at 18 kilometers per second, and for those of you who deal with normal units, that's about 40,000 miles per hour. So it hit the atmosphere above Russia, moving at that speed. It penetrated at a shallow angle, less than 20 degrees. It lasted over 30 seconds in our atmosphere before breaking apart about 20 to 25 kilometers, which is 12 to 15 miles above Earth's surface. When it broke apart, this produced a violent explosion, and there may have been several smaller events as well, in the vicinity of 300 kilotons of energy, which produced a shock wave that propagated down as well as through the atmosphere. And when it propagated down, this shock wave struck the city below causing large numbers of windows to be broken, some walls to collapse, and minor damage throughout the city. So when you hear about injuries, those are undoubtedly due to the effects of the shock wave striking the city and causing walls to collapse and glass to fly, not due to fragments striking the ground. There are undoubtedly fragments on the ground, but as of this time, I know of no fragments that have been recovered that we can verify with certainty. A preliminary orbit for this object indicates it originated in the asteroid belt with a uh, farthest distance from the sun, about two and a half times Earth distance. And it does appear to be an asteroid in nature. We, um, uh, we are asked the question, well, why wasn't it detected before? And based on this preliminary orbit, the reason it wasn't detected by telescopes on Earth was because it literally came out of the day side of our planet. It was in the daylight sky, and as you know, telescopes can't see things in the daytime. So this object came out of the daylight sky, and as a result was not detected by any Earth-based telescopes. So that's what we know at this time, and I'm going to pass it over to Paul Chodas and let him talk about the asteroid 2012 DA-14, plus anything he might care to add about this event over Russia this morning. Well, good afternoon. What an amazing day for near-Earth objects. Uh, by an incredible coincidence, we have two rare events happening on this very same day with asteroid 2012 DA-14 passing very close to the Earth for an asteroid of uh, that size, 150 meters, uh, or uh, um, a half a football field in size. And we have a small 15-meter object, which I would call a tiny asteroid, actually hitting uh, the Earth at a shallow angle and creating a, a significant explosion. This is the, um, the largest recorded uh, event since the Tunguska explosion in 1908. This was very large for a, uh, for a meteor, uh, meteorite hit or fireball. But let me talk a little about the DA-14. It is already past close approach. We are continuing to uh, track it 
In fact, I believe we have a, a, a live feed from the La Sagra Observatory, which is the place where it was discovered um, uh, just about a year ago. So we can see the object on the screen, if you can see right now. It's, a, uh, it's moving. It's a little, there's a little streak because of the exposure that's being taken, and it's, gonna, it's moving quite rapidly for an asteroid. Uh, this is very unusual, and the reason for that is that it's, it's passing so close. Uh, to the uh, to the Earth, so um, and it's it's passing the Earth at seventeen thousand five hundred miles an hour, but it's on its way out now. Um, the uh, the uh, I should mention that it's ustream tv ustream tv slash nasa dot jpl jpl two excuse me. Um, so that's where you can take a look and see a live uh, shot of the asteroid. The asteroid has passed the Earth. It's on its way out, and it won't return this close for uh, many, many years. Uh, regarding the, uh, the Russian explosion, um, uh, there was a shock wave. Why is there a shock wave from, uh, from an, something coming in like this? I have to say, an, an asteroid, asteroids enter the Earth's atmosphere at a tremendous speed, 40,000 miles per hour, which, by the way, is uh, actually much faster than the DA-14 is passing the Earth, um, is an incredible speed. And in order, in order for the, uh, the, this tiny asteroid to slow down, the atmosphere will absorb that energy, okay? And so it is actually uh, um, emitting the energy as heat, and it's emitting it as light. This event must have been brighter than the sun if you were there to watch it. It's just incredible. Um, asteroids, tiny asteroids the size of this uh, one that hit over Russia this morning, hit the Earth on average about once every 100 years. So as you can see, the, the last recorded one that was of this size was the 1908 Tunguska explosion. These are rare events, and it's uh, an incredible coincidence to have them happening on the same day. The Russian uh, um, event, the fireball, is not related to the DA-14 asteroid in any way. And that's, uh, that's the end of my report. Right. Thank you, Bill and Paul. Angela, 